Hello students. I know once you have studied the chapter, around exam times, you look for questions that are the most relevant to that chapter. So I have created a just for exams question bank for every chapter. So I hope you like them and you benefit from them. So let us start with the text questions. For any board exam, the text questions are questions you cannot overlook. So I am taking up the first text question which asks, How does Douglas make clear to the reader the sense of panic that gripped him as he almost drowned? Discuss the details that have made the description vivid. Douglas mentioned each and every detail very, very vividly. Although he panicked, but he had a strategy in place. He had decided he would pop up like a cork and then paddle to the edge of the pool. Unfortunately, his attempt was wrong and terror seized him. He also tried to grab a rope, but his hands clutched only water. And he tried to yell, but no sound came out. His body parts were not supporting him because his legs were paralyzed and his lungs ached and his head throbbed because of lack of oxygen. His voice was frozen and the only signs he was feeling that made him alive was his beating heart and pounding head. Douglas had a plan to fight back. He decided to jump hard, but this didn't make any difference because there was too much of water around him. He attempted to come out of the water the third time as well, but it was all in vain. He sucked in air, got water, but somehow, finally, his body gave up. He stopped making efforts and he fainted into oblivion. All of the above details of his gripping, the clarity with which he explain it, explains it is amazing and it makes the reader visualize his panic situation. So the second question asks us how does Douglas overcome his fear of water? The fear that gripped Douglas after nearly drowning in the pool strike him many times. Finally, one October, he decided to engage an instructor and learn the art of swimming. He practiced swimming five days, one hour each day, and the instructor understood the magnitude of the problem and devised a noble method by which he could actually teach Douglas how to swim. His waist was tied to a rope that actually went through a pulley and the instructor held on to the rope and the narrator swam back and forth across the pool without the fear of drowning. Douglas could actually feel very confident and he grew panicky every time the instructor loosened his grip uh, or whenever he kept his face underwater. But somehow, after rigorous training, Douglas was also taught how to exhale water exhale underwater and inhale by raising his no nose from the water. He made him kick with his legs so that the narrator could also command them. From April to, till April I, I'd like to say, from October to April, Douglas perfected his swimming and to get rid of his childhood fear, he subjected himself to a rigorous test. And then he decided to practice in the pool till July. Still, he was not satisfied. He went to Lake Wentworth. The liquid filled old traces of air coming back, but he dropped them and, and with determination, he wanted to ensure that he has, yes, conquered his fear and he dived back into the warm lake. The third question asks us, why does Douglas as an adult recount a childhood experience of terror and his conquering of it? What larger meaning does he draw from this experience? 
Well, uh, Douglas as an adult recounts his childhood experience of terror and his ability to conquer his fear, which portrays that nothing is impossible. When a person wants to get things done, everything is possible. Determination is the only thing that is required to overcome any kind of hurdle in life. And he faced this thing practically when a big bully tossed him into the deep end of the YMCA pool. Through training from an instructor, finally, he was able to make a swimming, uh, he was able to make a swimmer out of himself. Now, let us look at some important short answer questions which can come in the exam. As I told you, this is just for exams section of uh, deep water. And the first question which I've taked up, taken up is, who, how did his experience at YMCA swimming pool affect Douglas? Well, Douglas's experience of drowning and almost being dead instilled a fear of water in him. He shook and he cried and he couldn't eat for days. For days, there was a haunting fear that engulfed him. The slightest exertion upset him. He never went back to the pool because he feared water and avoided it whenever he could. So uh, the second question talks about how did the instructor turn Douglas into a swimmer? Now, this is a question which I've deliberately given, though earlier we have already done this as a long answer question in one of the text questions. This I have put it under the section of short answer questions. So you should know how to write down the same question in a short as a short answer. So the instructor made him practice swimming step by step gradually piece by piece and he tied a rope against douglas's waist and that way, uh, rope was further tied to a pulley and the instructor had the rope in hand that prevented him from drowning and therefore he could easily swim lengths and breadths of the uh, pool without the fear of drowning therefore he perfected each piece one by one put them together and then into an integrated whole and the instructor made an announcement that yes he was now perfect and well trained as a swimmer now question number three asks us what did douglas feel and do when he was pushed into the swimming pool when Douglas was thrown into the swimming pool, he did not lose his heart. He planned to push himself up with all his force. He thought that once he came to the surface, he would paddle to the edge of the pool and thrice he tried to come to the surface. But unfortunately, his strategy didn't work. Terror gripped him and his lungs were ready to burst. He was breathless and instead of air, he was sucking in water. So, uh, this was how he felt when he was fell, uh, thrown into the pool. The fourth question asks us which two instances in Douglas's early life made him scared of water. Well, when Douglas was three or four years old, his father took him to the beach in California. There he was knocked down by the strong waves and was almost buried underwater and he got breathless. Though he hung on to his father, he was quite frightened. And secondly, when Douglas was 10 or 11, a big bully kind of a boy tossed him into the deep end of the YMCA pool. And that deep end was around 9 feet deep. And this was a child who was just learning how to swim. He could not come to the surface. And in spite of so many efforts, he became panicky. And therefore, he, he actually lost control and fell unconscious. And that left a deep scar on his life. These two instances made Douglas scared of water. Coming to the fifth question, which I have shortlisted is, which factors made Douglas to decide in favor of YMCA pool? In favor in terms of why should he learn swimming at YMCA pool? According to Douglas, the YMCA pool was much more safer than Yakima River. The river was very deep down there and there were several cases of drowning reported about it. His mother was definitely against 
going to the Yakima River to uh, to learn how to swim. And uh, because of the uncertain depth of the river, the pool was only two or three feet deep at the shallow end and the depth was definitely nine feet deep but the drop was very gradual so douglas could rely on learning swimming at the ymca pool now coming to the long answer questions actually these are basically the two questions which are very frequently asked in the examination that's why i have chosen these two questions the first question asks how did douglas develop an aversion to water now, since the age of three or four, his father had taken him to the beach and that is where he realized that he disliked water because he was frightened when a wave swept over him and he was buried in the water. And later onwards, in the, in the swimming pool, when he was around 10 or 11 years old, there was a big burly kind of a boy who threw him into the pool. And when he threw him into the pool, he actually threw him into the deep end of the pool. And this was a boy who didn't know how to swim. And therefore, uh, somehow he managed, he kept his mind working, he devised a way out, but things didn't turn out as planned. And the lungs felt as if it, they would burst. And he was overpowering with fear and trying to reach out for some kind of a support so that he would uh, float to the top and swim to the side of the pool but he got so suffocated due to the lack of air he could not scream and he moved his arms desperately but all his efforts failed and he once again sank to the bottom of the pool an unexplainable terror kind of seized him his limbs were lifeless and rigid due to fear and he could not even scream but his heart was beating and that was the only sign that he was alive he sucked in a lot of water and suddenly all his efforts to save himself stopped. He was relaxed and peaceful and he had almost gone into oblivion. So these were the reasons why he had developed an aversion to water. The second long answer question says what were the efforts made by Douglas to overcome his fear of water? He went to swim in different water bodies. He decided to get rid of his fear and be very sure about it even when the instructor who had taught him from October till July till April uh, when he told him that he is now a swimmer he still was not that confident. He decided to go to various lakes and dive and swam across them. He reverted very sarcastically to the tiny remains of fear that would grip him time and again when, when he went to swim alone. And Douglas realized that that fear was merely a crop of his mind and he had actually conquered it. And when he conquered it, he felt so free, free to walk the arduous terrains and free to indulge himself in all kind of water uh, activities like swimming and canoeing. So this is all that he did to overcome his fear of water. So children, I hope you'll be able to uh, understand which are the major questions that are asked in board exam from this chapter. And I hope you visit my channel again for another lesson. So see you soon. Bye-bye.